All right, so I thought I'd better show you these. These, again, are creations of many years ago. Um, when I was hounded into stopping painting, which actually has kind of happened right now also, I, um, I became interested in these little sewn sculptures that were very top-heavy and would fall over um, very easily. So they were kind of just about the difficulty of balance. At the time I had some silly thought about that sentence from Wittgenstein where he says, when you see a tree standing you can't tell if the tree is strong or if the tree is about to fall over. You know, and of course I took that not in its sense as a statement about reality, but just a, as a statement about the fragility of an individual person, particularly someone alone. Um, but obviously, you see, one of the first things I made was this little pair of Edo period entertainers from Japan. Actually, they were called taikomochi. Uh, that is, drum holders, but they did all kinds of other things, such as have these large body-sized puppets of, um, you know, dogs or lions. These are the lion's eyes, these are its nostrils, and you would get inside and kind of come out the other end. I, I'd never seen one where two guys got inside one of them, but I thought that was a kind of an interesting idea. So... This is one of the first things I made in that vein. You can see they're rather scarred and a bit of a mess. Somehow, I always like that. You know, I, I admit that. Um, so that one is there. Oop. Yes. These days, they need some help. And this, speaking of Wittgenstein, and again, I know I keep saying I was really young when I did these things, but I was, I was, over ten years ago. Um, so this is supposed to be some vocal cords and sort of a tongue rising up between them, and again, these, these little speech organs were related to Wittgenstein and one of his students. I mean, it's very sophomoric and dumb, but, you know... Looking back on myself of that time, um, if I weren't still so much like that, I'd think it was cute. Uh, but I, as it is, I just have to say, oh, how little progress is made. Um, <clears throat> and this one, this is a bit the worse for wear. Originally it was able to stand kind of like this. It's based on Goethe's uh, Die Leiden des Jungen Werthers. The Sufferings of Young Werther. <clears throat> and, you know, this is the little drop of, of blood. I thought it would be, you know, everybody does this cute, disgusting thing. Um, and I thought it would be even more cute to have it be handmade this way. Uh, and also more disgusting. Oh, uh, well, you know. And then finally, and this was the most obvious kind of statement, I made this thing out of some copper tubing and some evening gown type material. It is another tongue, but it's in the shape of a brain. It's kind of like the tongue that has taken over the entire thinking process, because even now, I feel as though talking and thinking, for me, unfortunately, are the same thing. So, this was called the tongue in drag as a brain, and as you can see, it's kind of the, the epitome of this top-heavy thing that has to find its balance 